What is chip load and what is inch per tooth or IPT? Each time the tool makes one revolution, let's take a two flute for example, there are two cutting edges that will bite into the material as that tool is being pushed into the workpiece. Just think like you had a big pile of Play-Doh and you have your, your fist like a claw and you're scooping it out. Each time it takes a scoop or a cut, that's the inch per tooth. The inch meaning the thickness of the chip that you're cutting. Now one of the things we'll talk about later in this series is how that chip that you're cutting changes on conventional and climb milling or chip thinning is another thing to talk about there. But let's keep it simple for now. And the biggest thing I want you to take away here is that people run their tools and their machines too slow or too light on the inch per tooth. And one of the best ways to ruin great tooling is to, to, to rub. In other words, you want to cut and chunk out a piece of material. You don't want to just be rubbing it at all. You'll end up creating a lot of heat and you'll end up uh, wearing down that cutting edge, which will then become a very quick downward spiral. People think if they run it light, in other words, a thin cut, the tool will last longer. And again, that's absolutely not true. The way this works is that each flute has an actual edge, like a knife edge on it. And that has a certain thickness and it lasts for a certain amount of time. For the cutting tool to work, that sharp edge needs to cut in and actually scoop out or cut out a piece of material. When it's trying to do that, the material, say aluminum or steel, is actually gonna not want to be cut. So there's gonna be some resistance. And again, that is where the sharp edge and the geometry that's ground into that tool matters so much. And so what happens is as you cut, create that cut, you're shearing away the material. That's the big difference between just trying to rub it away or taking such a thin cut that you're, again, doing more rubbing than actual shearing away of the material. As that cutting knife edge dulls, which happens to every tool, what happens, it becomes thicker. And as it becomes thicker, it requires more horsepower to create that shearing action as it's taking its cut. And as I mentioned, that's when, when a tool will start to quickly degrade because then it's performing less, it's creating more heat and more friction as it's trying to scoop with a blunt edge or shear with a blunt edge. And that's when your tool life starts to end. That's also why it, cutting with a really low inch per tooth will work great at first and you think it's this sense of false confidence because you think, okay, I'm taking it easy, this tool's gonna last me a really long time, we're good. I spent you know $7 or $14 and I want this tool to last forever and you think, okay, I'm gonna take it real easy, mm -mm. false confidence. You wanna be scooping away, you wanna actually see a chip um, that comes off that piece. Carl's takeaway when we were talking about this was that when you cut too lightly and you create that rubbing action, you will probably ruin that tool 10 times faster than if you had been taking a proper cut. So let's talk specifics. What should you take? For anything bigger than one quarter inch diameter tool, start at one thou per tooth. We'll have some, there's a link below to a spreadsheet you can download that has a very simple formula. I know formulas scare people, but trust me, it's not that hard that will show you your speeds and feeds. GWiz or another calculators or even HSM will also show you the chip per tooth. Start at one thou, again, anything bigger than a quarter inch. Anything less than a quarter inch, you gotta take it easy because that tool has less innate strength or rigidity to it. So what you don't wanna do though, as a rule of thumb, is go less than half a thou per tooth. So that's 0 0.0005. You wanna stay above that. 